Hello and welcome to Indus News live from Islamabad. I am Muni Palmith with the news of this hour. Let's begin with the headlines first. The coronavirus has infected over 31 million people, claiming more than 960,000 lives across the globe. The United States is the worst hit country, followed by India and Brazil. India's caseload is nearing 5.5 million, with the death toll approaching 88,000. In Pakistan, four more people have lost their lives to the disease, with the death toll at 6,420. China has rejected the United States' unilateral announcement of UN sanctions on Iran. In a letter to the Security Council, China's envoy to the UN, Chang Jun, called the US decision as illegitimate and void. Chang said the Security Council has already voted against the snapback mechanism's invocation against Iran. The United States has called on all sides to significantly reduce violence in Afghanistan amid the ongoing peace negotiations in Doha. U.S. Special Envoy Zalmi Khalilzad said rise in fighting is regrettable as Afghans, including many civilians, are losing their lives. Meanwhile, the Taliban said negotiating teams of the two sides discussed the working principles of the forthcoming meetings. Spokesman Dr. Mohammad Naeem said it is hoped a consensus with Kabul will be reached on the remaining points in the next meeting. Pakistan has refused the nomination of a senior Indian diplomat for the post of its charge day affairs in Islamabad, terming him too senior for the office. In a statement, Foreign Office spokesperson Zahid Hafiz Chaudhary said, by proposing a senior diplomat, India is trying to circumvent the effects of downgrading of diplomatic relations. Following illegal annexation of Jammu and Kashmir region by India last year, Pakistan decided to downgrade its diplomatic relations with India. coming in detail after a short break. Stay tuned. back now let's have the news in detail we start from the coronavirus updates from india which has infected over 31 million people claiming more than 960,000 lives so far across the globe now the united states is the worst hit country followed by india and brazil india's caseload is around 5.5 million with the death toll approaching 88,000. we have more details in this report the rising number of coronavirus infections has once again put the government across the world in a chaos. London Mayor Sadiq Khan says fast action is needed to halt the worsening spread of COVID-19 in the city as cases spike. In Spain's capital, Madrid, nearly a million residents are bracing for a partial lockdown with several hundred marching in protest. Meanwhile, Australia's coronavirus hotspot of Victoria reported its lowest daily rise in infections in three months. State Premier Daniel Andrews said there were no plans yet to ease restrictions sooner than expected. This is not just a good day, this is a great day. We are seeing these numbers come down, this strategy is working. We, all of us, have to stay the course though, because uh, if we were to open up right now, these numbers are still too high. The World Health Organization has endorsed African herbal medicines as potential treatments for the coronavirus and other epidemics. This comes as health authorities Indonesia and Bahrain reported additional coronavirus fatalities. Lebanon also added 1,006 new cases and 11 deaths in the last 24 hours in a new record for the crisis-hit country. 
As the pandemic affects daily lives and economy, activists fear the virus may drive up child exploitation cases as well. But uh, the biggest threat is that millions of children may fall back into slavery, trafficking, child labor, child marriages, uh, school would be denied. So uh, it's a big, big threat. It never happened in my life, but uh, neither in the lives of anyone um, in the past uh, decades. So it's a very serious problem, especially for children. South Korea has extended level 2 social distancing for a week and may tighten limits for the Chuseok holiday when people traditionally reunite with families. Meanwhile, the clinical trials of the new coronavirus vaccine proposed by a well-acclaimed international company will start in Pakistan this week. Now, the chairman of the Prime Minister's Task Force on Science and Technology, Dr. Atau Rahman, says International Centre for Chemical and Biological Sciences in Karachi has been approved for conducting the vaccine trials. Dr. Atau Rahman said the COVID-19 vaccine will be available in the country next year between April and June, depending on the success of the trials. Meanwhile, four people have died from COVID-19 in the last 24 hours, bringing the country's death toll to 6,420. The health ministry has had 633 people tested positive for the virus overnight. It said the country has 7,015 active cases with over 306,000 total confirmed cases. The ministry said over 292,000 people have recovered so far. Meanwhile, China has rejected the United States unilateral announcement of United Nations sanctions on Iran. In a letter to the Security Council, China's envoy to the UN, Chang Jun, called the U.S. decision as a legitimate and void. Chang said the Security Council has already voted against the snapback mechanism's invocation against Iran. He said Washington has no legal grounds to trigger the mechanism unilaterally, especially when it is no longer a party to the Iran nuclear deal. The envoy said China is committed to upholding the efficacy of the nuclear deal and the authority of the Security Council resolutions. Earlier, the U.S. unilaterally declared to re-impose international sanctions lifted from Iran after the 2015 nuclear deal. The United States has called on all sides to significantly reduce violence in Afghanistan amid the ongoing peace negotiations in Doha. United States Special Envoy Zalmay Khalilzad said rise in fighting is regrettable as Afghans, including many civilians, are losing their lives. Meanwhile, the Taliban said negotiating teams of the two sides discussed the working principles of the forthcoming meetings. Spokesman Dr. Mohammad Naeem said it is hoped a consensus with Kabul will be reached on the remaining points in the next meeting. Earlier, a Taliban delegation met with the NATO representative in Doha. The Taliban spokesman said NATO assured its support and assistance for peace in Afghanistan. Back in Afghanistan, officials have confirmed civilian casualties in government airstrikes on a Taliban base in Kunduz on Saturday. A lawmaker from Kunduz said 11 civilians were killed in the airstrikes. But the Taliban said 40 civilians lost their lives in the air raids. Moving on, Qatar says it stands by the Palestinians and the long-standing conflict with Israel can only be resolved by addressing its root causes. The statement comes days after the signing of the U.S. brokered UAE-Israel normalization deal. Qatar's Foreign Affairs Ministry said it will spare no effort to ease the sufferings of the Palestinians until they get their rights. Doha called for an end to the Israeli occupation and establishment of a sovereign Palestinian state within the framework of the United Nations Security Council resolutions. It said all Palestinian refugees elsewhere should be granted the right to return to their homeland. Recently, Bahrain became the latest Arab country to establish diplomatic ties with Israel, which the Palestinians called a stab in the back. 
Meanwhile, Russian and Turkish militaries have held a joint training drill in the de-escalation zone in the Syrian province of Italy. A spokesperson for the de-escalation zone's coordination center said the aim of the drill is enhancing coordination between Turkish and Russian militaries. The center drills will prepare the militaries to face emergency situations such as attacking militant convoys. He said co coordination of military personnel and the procedure for organizing communication on the route using special signals were worked out. Idlib remains one of the four de-escalation zones in Syria established by Russia, Iran and Turkey back in 2017. Now, Pakistan has refused the nomination of a senior Indian diplomat for the post of its charge day affairs in Islamabad, terming him too senior for the office. In a statement, Foreign Office spokesperson Zahid Hafiz said, by proposing a senior diplomat, India is trying to circumvent the effect of downgrading of diplomatic relations. The spokesperson said the news in certain sections of Indian media regarding assignment visa for senior Indian diplomat Jayanth Khobra Gade is misleading. Charles Rhee said Pakistan downgraded diplomatic relations with India after its illegal annexation. He said the purpose of downgrading the relations was to register Pakistan's strong protest. Charles Rhee said Pakistan has counseled India to nominate an officer with seniority commensurate with Pakistan's decision. Meanwhile, 10 people have been killed after a three-story building collapsed in India's southwestern Maharashtra Strait. The National Disaster Response Force said around 25 others are feared trapped under the rubble. The official said over 40 emergency workers are present at the scene. Witnesses say at least 20 people were rescued by the locals and 31 by the rescue teams. Rescuers also managed to save a child from the rubble. Now, India's parliament has passed a new farm bill with the opposition calling them anti-farmer and pro-corporate. Prime Minister Modi hailed the legislation, saying it was a watershed moment for agriculture in India. But Indian opposition said the new bills will diminish the farmers' bargaining power. Twelve opposition parties also moved a no-confidence motion against the deputy chairman of Upper House of Parliament. They said... Hari Vanj Singh violated the parliamentary procedures in trying to pass the farm sector bills in haste. Meanwhile, former Food Minister Hari Simrat Kaur said the bills will increase farmers' suffering in Punjab. Many farmer organizations have held street protests in Punjab and the neighboring Haryana state. Meanwhile, world leaders are coming together via video link to mark the 75th anniversary of the United Nations. The commemoration will be held entirely online due to travel and congregation restrictions due to COVID-19. In an interview, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres said the pandemic has exposed the world's fragilities. Guterres said he will tell the world leaders they need to work together at a time when there is a surplus of multilateral challenges and deficit of solutions. All speeches by the representatives of member countries will be broadcasted in the General Assembly Hall. The theme of the 75-year anniversary is the future we want, the United Nations we need, reaffirming our collective commitment to multilateralism. A youth plenary related to the 75th anniversary will also be held today. Moving on, Japanese Prime Minister Yoshihide Suga and United States President Donald Trump have discussed to strengthening their alliance during a phone call. This is Suga's first interaction as the new premier with the U.S. president since taking the office. Speaking to the media afterwards, Suga said a mutual consensus was reached with Trump to further develop the bilateral ties. The new premier said the alliance of two countries was the foundation of regional peace and stability. He said they agree to coordinate closely on issues including the coronavirus situation and North Korea. Earlier in the day, Suga also had a phone conversation with Australian counterpart Scott Morrison. Now in Greece, three people have died as storm Lanus battered central and western parts of the country. The storm triggered landslides, forcing authorities to shut down schools in the area. Emergency services said they received over 2,000 calls for rescue operations throughout Greece. They said 896 rescue missions have been completed so far. 
Earlier, a medical center and main roads collapsed in the Kantitsa region after Lanos caused a river to overflow its banks. Cyclone Lanos uprooted trees and caused power cuts on the Ainoian Islands and the western Peloponnese. Around 270 whales have stranded on a sandbar off the remote west coast of the Australian island of Tasmania. Marine biologists have started rescuing them. Officials said at least 25 of the pilot whales have already died. Pilot whales are a species of oceanic dolphin that grows 7 meters long and can weigh up to 3 tons. Tasmania's Department of Water and Environment said the whales were stranded in three groups in shallow water at Macquarie Heads. Scientists had first thought the mass stranding involved about 70 whales when it was viewed from the air, but a closer inspection revealed the larger number. More news coming up in this bulletin after a short break. Stay tuned. Welcome back now. China's first Mars probe, Tianwen-1, has completed its second orbit adjustment to better continue its flight to the planet. The adjustment came after some deviation of the probe from its orbit after a long-time unpowered flight. Chief designer of Tianwen-1, Dong Ji, said four engines of the probe worked simultaneously for 20 seconds to complete the adjustment. He said the mission performed the engine startup and shutdown as expected. Xi said they will further evaluate the effects of the orbit adjustment, including accuracy based on the positioning results in the future. So far, the probe has traveled about 160 million kilometers, 19 million kilometers away from the Earth. It will travel for another five months before it approaches Mars. Now, Malaysia ranks as the eighth among the top ten countries with mismanaged plastic waste in the world. To clean the Malaysian oceans from plastic, some volunteers have taken up a step to gather ocean-bound plastic for recycling. Details in this report. Increasing consumption of single-use plastics has polluted the environment, which is shocking marine life and destroying the oceans on the planet. A World Wildlife Fund report says Malaysia is a top plastic consumer in Asia. Some volunteers have taken up the responsibility to clean Malaysia's ocean from plastic. They gather ocean-bound plastic that can eventually be transformed into pellets which are modified into auto parts, home appliances and furniture. They're eventually sold to dozens of companies. Everything is wrapped in plastic these days, so it's incredibly hard. So with recycling, you know, it's all well and good to, um, I guess, clean up the environment and recycle them into usable items that uh, people can make money off. But it's never going to, um, it's never going to actually stop the situation if you don't tell people to stop using the plastic first and actually deal with the problem of it getting into the environment in the first place. Peng Hiap Industries is also working with environmentalists to collect and remove plastic waste from Malaysian waters. It recycles 60,000 tons of plastic each year. And because we see that marine pollution is becoming a problem and we decided to focus in ocean-bound plastic material. With this, we are able to serve the conscientious consumer who are basically buying products that ranges from automotive, from home appliance, uh, from furniture. Plastic pollution is a global problem that needs to be taken up in a sustainable manner. Malaysia plans to address single-use plastics by encouraging the plastic industry to transition to eco-friendly products. The return of tourists to Egypt's resort and ancient sites is facing a tough winter season. Officials say tourist sites and hotels are subject to strict controls amid the coronavirus pandemic. More details in this report. The reopening of pyramids of Giza after a coronavirus break witnessed just a handful of tourists. Those entering the country are required to take PCR tests as sites in Luxor across the River Nile from the Valley of the Kings reopened on September 1st, a single group of only 12 tourists visited. This year, 10 person less tourists than the last year visited the country. 
This virus came about and ruined everything. There was tourism and things were operating when things were good. After it has all become what you see now, total ruin. The state has moved to protect the sector with emergency funding. More than 9,000 registered tour guides will receive £500 monthly until the end of the year. Tourism firms are also pleading for exemptions on some fees to be extended. Officials said Egypt was losing around $1 billion each month after the sector shut down from March when the coronavirus pandemic struck. I really think that we cannot sit and wait until this virus will be completely finished. But you can come and you can be protected because you can enjoy the magic and you touch the pyramid and you follow the mummies coming from Cairo Museum to go to the uh, Civilization Museum. Tourism accounts for up to 15% of Egypt's national output. Government officials say they are making every effort to reassure tourists about their safety and encourage them to visit in the hope that the sector will revive gradually. A Brazilian wheelchair-bound man has efficiently proven to be differently able. Juliana D'Aurelio is a local celebrity in downtown Sao Paulo, famous for beating the odds and coming out stronger than ever. More about this delivery man in this report. Aurelio zips around Sao Paulo, bringing meals to hungry customers. But unlike other food delivery men, he does not ride a bike to weave his way through the hectic streets of Brazil's megacity. Five years ago, an accident dramatically changed Aurelio's life. Since he finally embraced his wheelchair as a source of strength rather than a sign of his disability, he hasn't looked back. I tried to commit suicide three times and it didn't happen. Thank God. I don't regret it because life goes on and today I am very happy. My wife is by my side helping me out, making me stronger, always providing me with moral support. When my life changed, after accepting that I would live in a wheelchair, I remember I looked at the wheelchair and spoke to it. If I'm going to live with you, then I'm going to live. I want to see if you can handle me because I'm going to handle you. I want to see if you can take me. Aurelio says he raised about 2,200 US dollars to adapt his motorbike to fit his wheelchair and in preparation for his job as a delivery man. He has been delivering food for some six months now, just about when the pandemic brought much of Brazil to a halt. But he is thankful for the daily grind of his job for getting him through tough times economically and emotionally. The job of a delivery man is not made for us wheelchair users. I am in this situation today working as a delivery man, overcoming obstacles, overcoming challenges. Because us wheelchair users are not useless. We are not disabled, we are able to do things, we are capable of everything. We just have to run after it. The delivery man says he has never been discriminated against and nobody has ever treated him disrespectfully. He is not getting too rich, but his life has been on the up. In business stories, European stocks have tumbled as allegations surrounding bank dealings and rising coronavirus infections weigh on market sentiment around the world. The pan-European stock 600 dropped 2% with banks plummeting over 4.5% and travel stocks falling nearly 5%. London's FTSE plunged over 3% while Italy's FTSE MIB slid almost 3%. Frankfurt's DAX lost nearly 3%. In Paris, the CAC40 also dived nearly 3%. With that, we come to the end of the bulletin. For the latest updates, you can follow us on social media at Indus.news. Take care.